Here's what's happening now. Just a couple spritz of uh, drizzle hanging around southeast Michigan, but wait till you see what's coming in before the end of the week. Paula? Hey, Ben, a day to recognize the need for equal pay for women with their male counterparts, excuse me, counterparts. And we profile a local company that says this is more than just a slogan, Karen. All right, Paula, up first, a police chase in the city of Detroit, a woman behind the wheel. See what happens when she gets out of the van and tries to run away. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. First at four, take a look. We're talking about this police chase. It was a crazy scene. A woman jumps out of a van in Hamtramck after leading cops through several neighborhoods. You can see she didn't get far. She was tackled right there as she tried to climb a fence. Let's bring in local force Steve Garagiola on more on what and how this chase played out. The chase ended here at Kniff and the I-75 service drive. That blue van, the focus of attention. But it was a wild ride to get here. Detroit and Hamtramck officers all involved. First indications were that a child might be in the vehicle. Possible child screaming and hollering. Uh, when the officers got there within 10 minutes, the van took off running. It turned out a woman was the sole occupant. She crossed through neighborhoods on and off the freeway before ending up here at Kniff. She seemed to realize she was boxed in and hopped out of the van to make a run for it. Stopped by a fence, the tackle was courtesy of Hamtramck police officer Nicole Jabor, who says this was her first, just doing her job. Once I saw her bail, I just, I started running for her and I, I tackled her. So there was no child involved, nobody got hurt, and the woman who led police on that chase remains in custody. We'll hear more from Officer Jabor coming up at 5. In Detroit, I'm Steve Garagiola, Local 4. On Detroit's east side, that accident happened here at Kelly and Novara Street. That's where police say a man was crossing the street and was hit by a car late last night. The man died. Right now, police are still trying to identify the victim and find the driver responsible. The Detroit Police Department teamed up with the Wayne County Sheriff's Office to host a recruiting event today. Chief James Craig and Sheriff Benny Napoleon kicked off the event by speaking to interested candidates. Chief Craig spoke of the excitement, diversity, and hardships that come with being a police officer. The two departments are looking to hire 100 employees. In the first forecast, it is a gray spring day. Temperatures are falling from the morning. Is things going to brighten up a little bit for us, Ben? Mm, not today, Karen, but you know what? Once we get later into the forecast, we're going to make up for lost time, but we've got some, some weather speed bumps to get over first. This is really not one of them. We're just sort of watching the rain dry out here. Just a couple areas of very light rain or drizzle left over uh, hanging around the city of Detroit, heading down towards uh, Down River, and a couple more drops showing up here in our northern suburbs. Not going to last long. We should be mostly cloudy for the rest of the night. Temperatures will continue to drop, but slowly we'll be down to the mid 40s here by midnight. We'll stay dry tonight and at least for much of Wednesday, but things change dramatically as we head towards the end of the forecast. More on that coming up in a few minutes. Karen. Both houses of Congress in Washington are busy this week tackling two emotionally charged issues and both issues are very important to President Donald Trump. There have been some new developments today, so let's bring in Devin Skillian. He joins us live from the newsroom to keep us up to date. Devin. Well, Karen, for the House, the issue right now is health care, while in the Senate, the issue is President Trump's nomination of Judge Neil Gorsuch to the Supreme Court. Today, we are getting a clearer picture of how the Gorsuch nomination fight is going to end, but we're really just at the beginning of round two in the fight over health care. And let's start there. Republican House Speaker Paul Ryan withdrew a measure last month of course, that would have replaced Obamacare because it didn't have the votes to pass it. Well, now Republicans are talking about a new plan. Speaker Ryan says discussions are at the concept stage right now, as he put it, uh, too early to make predictions. In the Senate, Democrats do have the votes to block the Gorsuch nomination with a filibuster, but Republicans are prepared to change the rules. That would allow a simple majority vote to approve the nomination instead of the usual 60 that are needed. Republicans say Gorsuch is qualified. Democrats question his commitment to basic principles. Not only over the administration of justice, if there's a subpoena, but over rights of privacy and equality, a nominee who fails to commit, as, by the way, Roberts, Alito, Kennedy all agreed to do, this nominee would not. This guy's a legal rock star. No reasonable person 
can listen to Judge Neil Gorsuch testify for 20 to 30 hours and, and come away not thinking that he's qualified, eminently qualified, to be on the United States Supreme Court. Of course, a lot of the bitterness on the part of the Democrats was the fact that uh, Merrick Garland, President Obama's pick for the Supreme Court, never really got a nomination hearing. But the expectation in Washington is that Republican leaders are going to move Thursday to invoke uh, what is known as the nuclear option. That would end the filibuster with a simple majority vote. And then on Friday, uh, the Gorsuch nomination would be approved by that simple majority. Then, senators start a two-week Easter vacation. Karen, back to you. All right. Thank you, Devin. We're covering other stories all around the world today. Let's start in Syria with reports of a chemical attack that has killed nearly 60 people, including nearly a dozen children. Opposition activists blame an airstrike from either the Syrian government or Russian warplanes. Russia's defense ministry and the Syrian government both deny responsibility. While the United Nations hasn't confirmed the attack, Secretary of State Rex Tillerson is calling on Russia and Iran to make sure Syria stops using chemical weapons. Nerves are still very much on edge in St. Petersburg, Russia, one day after a suicide bombing on that city's subway system. Four stations were closed this morning after a new bomb threat, but they did reopen by early afternoon. 14 people are now dead in yesterday's attack. Investigators say a 22-year-old suicide bomber from the Soviet Republic of Kyrgyzstan is behind the blast. So far, there's been no claim of responsibility. Meantime, people in Moscow, the Russian's capital, are paying tribute to the victims of that bombing. They're leaving flowers at a memorial outside of the Kremlin. And the head of the Russian Orthodox Church led a special service in Moscow's Christ the Savior Cathedral. In addition to the 14 people killed, almost 50 people remain hospitalized with injuries. The NCAA will once again consider North Carolina to host championship events after the state repealed that so-called transgender bathroom bill. Gay groups are blasting that decision, saying the organization let North Carolina off the hook. The NCAA, though, is giving North Carolina's new law a lukewarm endorsement, saying it meets minimal requirements and it will be watching to make sure it creates discrimination-free environments. Moving to California, the state Senate has passed a bill that creates the first sanctuary state for immigrants. The bill would forbid state officials from asking about immigration status and would limit how they cooperate with federal agents. The state Senate passed that bill along party lines with Democrats in favor and Republicans opposed. The bill now heads to the state assembly where it is expected to pass. Take a look at these employees. They are walking out, and there's a reason. To show support for equal pay for women. April 4th is a symbolic date, representing the extra time women have to work to pull even the average man's salary from last year. Paula Tutman spoke to employees at that Southfield business about the gender pay gap, and we report on this year after year, but it seems to be getting more attention now than really ever, Paula. Yeah, it does. And I've done these stories, but I think this might be the first time I was actually invited inside a company to see what they're doing. Now, when you're a company like Donor, image is everything. They know it does not look good to even have a minimal gender pay gap. But not only does it not look good, they realize that it is not good. And so today they told us how they are planning to make these changes. It's a deep granite building on the east side of Northwestern Highway near 10 Mile in Evergreen. This morning, its logo got a bit of a facelift. And if you wonder what they do at Donor, they do this. Why is his bigger? They are ad men and women. Their bread and butter is image and they are masters at spin. Today, however, they are spinning a new message. Close unfair gaps in pay between men and women doing equal work. I think it's based on very old ways of thinking um, that have been around a long time and have been sort of grandfathered into a lot of businesses. And in initiatives like this are intended to raise awareness for the issue, but more importantly, inspire companies to take action on it as we are. There are about 500 employees working for Donor globally. In the Detroit office, Sue and Cheryl have a combined 60 years. They were here before anyone was talking pay equality. Early on, probably 10 years into my career, and I, there was a male counterpart that was doing exactly the same job that was getting paid more. I just couldn't believe the gap 
I, I, it was almost hard to believe. That was 20 years ago for Sue, but Brittany, who's only been at the company for one year, experienced the same feelings recently. We had a new team member come in, and I've seen that counterpart advance at a very fast pace. So I hear that, and I'm like, gosh darn it. I want to fix that. So closing the pay gap, how is this not spin? We did the exact same thing, but he gets more and I get less. Perhaps the actions behind it and the teeth to follow. The company has commissioned an independent audit looking at salaries, disparities, descriptions. Preliminary numbers show that there may be as much as a 10% gender gap in pay. And the company is actually seeking data to figure out why that happens and how to stop it take a look at our pay practices between men and women, uh, identify the discrepancies, and then we've committed to closing the gap. It makes me feel like I want to stay here and I want to see Donor evolve. I'm very proud. I'm very proud to be here. So let's take another look at the O in that donor. I guess you could call that temporary branding. It goes away in a couple of weeks. But what doesn't go away is this deep diving into why there is this disparity and ways, Karen, they say they actually want to fix this. Well, Paula, that's pretty impressive. Very rarely do you hear a company voluntarily trying to kind of investigate themselves to make sure they're doing what's right. Yeah, it's very interesting. It was interesting to go in there and talk to those employees and really get some of their real thoughts about what's happened to them in the past and moving forward. It definitely is happening. That is the case, and it's nice to shine the light on that. Thank you, Paula. We appreciate it. We've got some other news to share with you today. Comedian Dave Chappelle is coming back to Detroit, and he's actually talking about why he skipped that fundraiser for the Flint water crisis. Also had no credit card, no debit card, no problem. A retail giant is working to make online shopping more accessible to everybody. Good afternoon, Dr. McGeorge. Hey, Karen, in good health, millions of people were shocked when celebrity trainer Bob Harper had a heart attack. Well, now he's talking about the experience for the first time, and he has a message for all of you about your heart health. His story, that's next. Four Zone. Coming up all new on Local 4 News at 5 and 6. A family in Taylor is outraged after the city tells them this painting that's been up for two years has to come down. Hear more from the family and how the city is responding. All right, thank you, Coco. Let's talk good health. Celebrity physical trainer Bob Harper talks for the first time about surviving a heart attack. Dr. Frank McGeorge is here, and his story really is a life lesson for so many of us. We see him oh, yeah. physically fit, eating healthy, and then a heart attack. Absolutely. Understandably, millions of people were understandably confused when Bob Harper announced he had a heart attack. Now, many of you know him from the show The Biggest Loser. He seemed to be the picture of health. He worked out all the time, and he's only 51 years old. But that did not stop the heart attack that hit in mid-February when he collapsed at the gym. Luckily, there were some doctors who were at the gym who administered CPR and used an AED to save his life. In a Today Show exclusive, Harper says he learned something that could help a lot of other people. But there were things going on inside of my body that um, I needed to be more aware of. And I strongly encourage anyone that's listening right now to go to the doctor, get your cholesterol checked, see what's going on on the inside so you don't, it doesn't happen to you what happened to me. Now, in fact, one of the reasons Harper said he should have been concerned was that his mother died of a heart attack. And he says it's really important to know your family medical history so you can better respond to any warning signs. And he's also pushing for more automated external defibrillators, actually, in public places. And he says he will not go to a gym without one because wow. it literally saved his yeah. life. All right. Thank you, Don. Mm -hmm. Ben, what is up for the rest of our day in the forecast? Well, we're finally getting the rain out of here, Karen, but we're actually starting to focus on snow, believe it or not. Winter storm watches have just been posted. This is only for northern lower Michigan, uh, but this blue area, even though it's a winter storm watch, they're expecting six to eight inches of snow, believe it or not, as we get late into Thursday, early, uh, or I should say late Wednesday, early Thursday, Wind speeds of up to 45 miles an hour, and that rain snow line is going to inch a little bit further south. Even though we don't have any advisory south of here, 
it looks like the ground in Detroit probably won't be bare as we wake up on Friday and more on that in just a second. Current temperatures though have been on their way down. We're at 49 right now in Metro. In fact, just about everybody uh, is in the 40s right now. Sandusky at 42, one of our cooler spots, but it's also breezy. Wind gusts have topped 30 miles an hour. In fact, they're 33 at last check at Monroe and we will see these winds subside tonight, but at least for the rest of the evening, things are going to be a little bit gusty. So as one area of showers pulls out, uh, the next area of rain just now starting to cross uh, St. Louis, cross the Mississippi, and it's on its way here. It will start out in the form of rain, but as we mentioned, uh, it's going to end with some snow. So let's look at the timing on this as we get through the rest of tonight with dry conditions. We'll wake up tomorrow. We'll call it mostly cloudy. There may be a couple breaks in there of some sunshine, but don't count on it because they're not going to last very long. By Wednesday evening, we'll start seeing rain push in here. That is going to eventually transition to snow by 11 a.m. on Thursday. You can see where that rain snow line is here, and then we'll see that gradually move across the state as temperatures fall Thursday evening. The question, the big question is, is how much moisture is going to be left when those temperatures drop? Uh, so it's a little too early to tell numbers right now for us, but it does look like we're going to see something out of that system as far as snow goes. 39 tonight, few of those early sprinkles are on their way out of here. Let's look at high temperatures tomorrow. Winds are going to shift around to the northeast, so if you're near the east side lakes, that is going to have an effect right around 50 degrees here on the east side towards the river, probably 54 officially at the airport. South zone temperatures, look at this impact here from uh, Lake Erie. Is we'll see 43 in Luna Pier, 44 in Monroe, and temperatures almost 10 degrees warmer out over in Lenaway County away from the lake. West zone temperatures, all 50s from 51 in Flint to 53 down towards Ann Arbor and again we'll see that impact from the northeast up here in our north zone temperatures falling as we get into Friday still looks like we'll see a dry game but could see some early flakes on Friday morning for opening day and temperatures ramp up for a nice weekend ahead Karen all right thank you very much Ben people are talking about comedian Dave Chappelle today and he is talking about why he missed a Flint water fundraiser up first Amazon's new offer how you can use cash to shop online Trending stories next. Let's talk trending stories. Amazon is reaching out to customers who don't have credit or debit cards. An estimated 27% of people are considered cash only customers. The company launched Amazon Cash Today, which allows people to add money to their Amazon.com account by using cash at participating retailers. Those retailers include places like CVS Pharmacy and Speedway gas stations. PayPal, by the way, offers a similar service. Well, for all of you chocolate lovers, this might interest you right now. Krispy Kreme has the perfect thing for you. The donut shop is teaming up with Giardelli's to create two new chocolate donuts. Starting today, Krispy Kreme is offering mint chocolate and sea salt caramel donuts. Ben's making sounds over there based <laughs> off of Giardelli's popular chocolate squares. Now, unfortunately, these will only be offered for a limited time, so act soon before they run out. Now, I'm a chocolate fan, Ben, but there could be too much going on there. You think? Krispy yeah. Kreme is an addiction. I yeah, mean, Krispy Kreme's is... just enough. You can oh. just like, but all that chocolate, I think it's too much. Well, you know what? We should but I guess that. I would try it first That's to decide. Right. Let's do that. All right. Uh, trending also today. Comedian Dave Chappelle returning to Detroit. He's going to host three shows in May at the Fillmore. And in his latest Netflix special, he was talking about why he missed a fundraiser for the Flint water crisis. Chappelle says, well, Chris Rock invited him to the Oscars. And, well, he just couldn't turn it down. He says he's no superhero and he likes to have fun, too. Tickets for the Fillmore shows go on sale Thursday morning. Still ahead, first at four, going once, going twice. How much did this pink diamond go for? The prediction was 60 million bucks. The winning bid when we come back. A trip to the grocery store, it can cost you hundreds of dollars, but you can save big money if you know how to play the coupon game. For all of this, I paid $20. I know saving coupons can seem overwhelming, but now it's helped me hang to the rescue. Simple saving strategies to maximize your time and your money tonight at 11. My kids 